Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So, let's talk about web design 2018. A question that I get every so often is whether or not web design as a profession is at risk because of tools like Wix, web building tools like Wix, Squarespace, tools like Shopify. Are these tools going to make web design obsolete because they look pretty easy to, to use and you can create some pretty good looking sites? Short answer is no, because you have to look at these things as being tools, period. Yes, for very simple sites, any schmo, non-trained, non-professional could get in there and build something that's very basic. But there's much more to web design today than just doing a layout. Much more than that. You'd be surprised at how many business owners, small business owners, have no ability to see and lay out things, even with a tool like uh, Wix. You kind of think of it like um, a race car. You can give an average person a race car. Does that mean they're going to be able to drive it on the track well? Chances are not very likely. Let me get into this a little bit more. Web design goes through changes every so often, and these changes are driven by technology. So. Back in 1994, when I started building websites, everything was hand coding. Then the programs came out, the web design programs came out, like Front Page, Hot Dog, Dreamweaver later on, etc., etc. And it changed the way we used to build sites. And uh, that went on for a couple of years because of the limitation of technologies in terms of the coding languages. People make, made heavy use of programs, photo editing programs like Photoshop, uh, Corel Draw, whatever in their web design. The web design tool set in the 1990s was very different from where they are today or even where they were in the early 2000s. I remember a friend of mine who had been a professional web designer, webmaster as we would call them back then, and he stepped away from the web design world for about three years, two, three years. And when he came back, he found out that it was totally changed. The way we would look at things, the way we would apply the technologies was totally, totally changed. One of the major changes was that the use of Photoshop had diminished quite a bit. Back in the late 90s, early 90s, using Photoshop was a huge part of the process. To fast forward to 2003 and 2004, totally changed. The use of Photoshop became, at best, secondary. And in fact, today, I say, you don't really need hardly any Photoshop skills to be a successful web professional, web designer today. That's another story. So, in comes the early 2000s. You have this migration to CSS-based layout. The whole game changes again. Back in those days, around that time, give or take a couple years, WordPress came about and other content management systems. You install it on the server, boom, 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 you apply a template and then you want to generate a new page. It's just like using a WYSIWYG, what you see, what you get type of app and Bob's your uncle, where you go. And web designers were freaking out. Oh my, no, 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 if we use WordPress. We won't have any more work. We won't build all these pages. Well, what happened was that, uh, yes, Certain jobs that a web designer did in the 90s got replaced with even more complex jobs in certain respects that you did with WordPress. So you had this growth of the WordPress professional, the WordPress ecosystem with the themes and the plugins and the templates, the installations and the maintenance and the update. And now today, 35% of websites are, give or take, are powered by WordPress. Uh, add another CMS is you're looking at, you know, maybe close to 40% of the websites are CMS based. And that makes sense. CMSs are good. But it hasn't taken away from the utility of web designers. It's just that their roles, the jobs that the web designer uh, did changed quite a bit. Fast forward to today, you have web builders like Wix, you got e-commerce platforms like Shopify. And people are wondering, oh, no, no, is that going to replace web designers as well? Again, the web professional, web designer is kind of an old school term. Today, I think web professional or front end developer might be better. But even front end developer is kind of a specialization. You see, web design, 
the whole process of putting a site on the web, there's different ways to approach it. You can use a web builder like a Wix or a Squarespace. You can use a Shopify. You can go traditional. You can go WordPress. You can go Drupal. All these things are viable. And depending on the nature of the job at hand, you can use one or the other. So to answer a burning question, a lot of new web designers or aspiring web desi designers or front-end developers have, will these tools make web design obsolete? No. It's just going to shift the way web designers work and the type of uh, skills that they bring to the table. In fact, guess what? There are jobs for professional Wix uh, developers, believe it or not. There are jobs for professional Shopify developers. There are, of course, there's tons of work for WordPress professionals as well. So it's just, there is just a shift in the skill sets required for a web developer, web, not web developer, web designer, web professional, beyond the uh, mechanics of getting a site up in terms of uh, the layout and so forth. There's always other things that come into it. Search engine optimization strategy, um, web marketing strategy, uh, setting up just the whole process, getting the site up online. How do you get video going? Now you can do these, certain amount of these things with a tool like Wix and stuff, but typically what you're gonna find with builders like that, web builders, is that they work fine with a very narrow track. Just a very narrow, and you go outside that track, you got all kinds of problems. And evidence of that is that Wix has opened up its, uh, its tool set using JavaScript, of course. And so that if you really wanted to master Wix, you got to know your JavaScript well. What business owner is going to know that? So the fact that you have people posting jobs, and I'll do this in another video, for Wix developers or Wix designers tells you something about Wix, tells you something about the profession. Again, whether you, you do it from scratch, whether you go for a CMS like WordPress or Drupal, whether you go Wix or Squarespace as a starting point and build off of that, all these uh, tools are still, um, still require a certain amount of knowledge in terms of the web and the coding and so forth. So again, I don't see these things as, as a threat. I just see, see these things as power tools, if you will, to help speed up the process. Trust me, back in the old days, we used to have to spend a huge amount of time tweaking, tweaking images, making sure they were compressed properly so that they, look, they loaded in a reasonable amount of time. A huge amount of work had to be done. Really, it's teeth pulling work. We don't have to do that anymore. Thank you. Thank the nerds for that one. Thank the nerds for that one. So if a tool like a Wix or a Shopify simplifies a process to implement the cart or to implement the, to implement the basic structure, that's cool. That's fine. You're gonna, they're going to hire people, web professionals like you potentially, to put that into place. Because business owners, they don't know. They don't know. Well, should I use Wix? Should I use Squarespace? How do I use it? What do I do? How do I get video? What do I do for my social strategy? How about the SEO? How do I get it on? How do I get my site ranking? Um, what kind of layout do you think I should use given the type of business? These are all things that Wix can answer. These are things that a web professional will bring to the table. So again, all this said, you still need your basics. Always the fundamentals again. If you know your HTML5, your CSS3, your JavaScript, and you understand the fundamentals of web design and development and so forth, all these tools become much easier to use and you'd be, you'd be much more productive with them. If you understand proper layout, proper usability, they call that uh, UX you know, and UI. Again, you need that training, that eye to know what, what to do, where to place things. Wix can help automate the process, like a power tool can help you automate the process of building a table or something. But just because you have the power tools to build and cut the wood, and et cetera, et cetera, you still need the skills to put it all together so it looks pretty good. Just with these builders, whether it be WordPress or whether it be Wix or Shopify, they just speed the process up. That's all. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Cheers, guys. In fact, in one of the businesses I'm involved with, 
it uh, I can't go into too much detail, but it is basically in the um, uh, the Airbnb space. And uh, so we were looking at a web app that we had to build, something that was uh, required a bunch of, bunch of complexity. So I said, I looked at it as a CTO of this particular business. I looked at it and I made the decision to not spend the $100,000 it would be be required to build the application from scratch, I found a SaaS, a software as a service, that pretty much did everything that we needed, um, at least one part of the business. And we pay our licensing fee there. And then for other parts of the business, in terms of the website, the web presence, I used, uh, in this case, we I decided to use WordPress. Again, there are reasons for that. Now, I have the skills, I have people who work for me who have the talent. We could have built these things from scratch, but it was not required. So we use third-party tools, as any smart web professional would do. Now, still, I was able to make these decisions and make these judgments because of my background as a developer and, of course, a business owner. And so my role as CTO was very important, whereas my uh, and the two partners involved with this, my two other partners, they have some technical skills, but not very much. So they depended on my judgment to make these decisions. Otherwise, they'd be running around for a long time. And in fact, in, uh, I have other people I know who have businesses, because they don't have a proper CTO, they, they call me up every now and then asking questions about things because they just don't know what to do. You know, it could be simply, should we use WordPress? Should we use Drupal? Should we go from scratch? Should we build from scratch? What do we do? Uh, what do we do? Should we use this platform? I, we, they don't have any way to judge. That's where web professional comes in. I hope that story gives you some insight in terms of how the real world looks. So again, don't see these tools as threats. See them as just new tools that will make your job a little easier in certain areas. And if you learn to embrace and understand these tools and how to use them properly, you're just going to be a much more successful web professional. That's all. Bye-bye.